All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome today. Um, if you told me yesterday that we would be debuting electric buses and electric charging infrastructure right after or possibly during a thunderstorm, I would not believe you. But here we are today. Um, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of everyone at Lake Tran. My name is Brian Falkowski, and I am the president of the Board of Trustees. We're here to celebrate leadership to recognize the vision that Lake County's own Frank Polifka offered the public transit industry and our community. His leadership and influence allowed Lake Tran to become a nationally recognized transit system early in its existence and laid a foundation that has allowed us to serve over 20 million passengers. We're here to celebrate long-standing community partnerships. Lake Tran and Lakeland Community College, two anchor institutions in Lake County have always collaborated to improve the quality of life for our students and our families. Lakeland has always been committed to making higher education accessible for the residents of Lake County. By offering Lake Trans space on their campus to operate this brand new transit hub that now serves eight of our 12 bus routes. And whenever we're able to do a project that incorporates Lake Tran and Lakeland, it's always very special to me. I started out after I graduated high school by attending Lakeland, and then eventually finished my education at John Carroll and got a master's at Case Western Reserve. So to be here to do these, this project with these two great institutions is really fantastic. And lastly, we're here to celebrate innovation. Innovation that'll bring long-term economic and environmental benefits to both Lake Tran and our community. I'm very proud to say that here before you is Ohio's first zero emission battery operated bus. In 2017, I was first introduced to the electric bus technology and could immediately tell that this was the future of transportation. With vision from our board and the hard work of the Lake Trans staff, I am proud to be launching the most efficient and sustainable vehicle technology here in Lake County. I would now like to invite our U.S. Army Vietnam veteran, David Napakni, to present our flag. With him today are Army veterans Norman Guccion and Jeff Miller. Hello, guard. Please Arms. And if we could all please stand, which most of us are, and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in thanking our veterans from Menor's George E. Hayward VFW Post for joining us here today and their service to our country. <laughs> Next, I would like to recognize our dignitaries that are here with us today. Our elected officials and community leaders who are able to join us this morning, whose support has allowed Lake Tran to make great strides providing exemplary public transportation services. At this time, though, I would request if we could please hold our applause until the end. I have some of my fellow trustees here today. Vice President of the Board, Chuck Zibel, Lane Sheets, Sarah Spence. We also have the Chairman of our Labor Union, who I believe at one point was sitting behind the wheel of the electric bus, uh, John Murphy. And we have some of our former Lake Tran trustees here. John Redman, past president Kevin Malachek, Gene Sensi, and Dale Schiavone. I will now mention some of the elected, elected officials here to support Lake Tran at the state and local level. Uh, state Senator Jerry Serino is here. And State Senator Serino has helped out an awful lot at the county level and at the state level now. We have State Senator uh, Minority Leader Kenny Yuko. State Representative Dan Troy, who's done a lot here at Lakeland and at Lake Tran. Lake County Auditor Chris Galloway, Faith Andrews, Lake County Clerk of Court. Our Commissioners, John Hammercheck and John Plotchnik. Painesville Township Administrator, Mike Mannery, Mentor Councilman Scott Marn, Judge Mike Ciccinetti. Also with us today are some of our friends in transit, part of CEO, Claudia Amarine, ODOT Transit Director, Chuck Dreyer, Grace Gallucci, Executive Director and CEO at NOACA, and former Greater Cleveland RTA CEO, Joe Calabrese. 
And of course, Lake Trans first general manager and our honoree, Lake Metro Parks Commissioner, Frank Polifka. Uh, lastly, I'd like to thank some of our event sponsors who are here today, many who have played an instrumental role. Project engineers at CT Consultants, located here in Menor, Willoughby's Tech Inc., who also helped on the design and engineering, our general contractor, Engel Key Construction, ABB, who provided our in route charging infrastructure, structure, Q Strength, the nation's leader in onboard wheelchair securement, and Roush Clean Tech, who provided our propane fueling systems for our dial a ride fleet. Please join me in thanking our sponsors for their support. And at this time, I would like to invite Lakeland Community College President, Dr. Morris Beveridge Jr. Jr. to welcome you to this beautiful campus. Good morning and welcome to Lakeland. I uh, looked long and hard for my tie this morning. I couldn't find it. So. <laughs> Oh, I take that as a sign. <laughs> At any rate, uh, thank you, Brian. I appreciate the uh, the invitation to uh, share a few thoughts with you folks this morning. Uh, congratulations, Frank. I uh, uh, I remember way back when you know when this was first getting started, and people were talking. You know, what's Frank up to? Uh, I think he's getting together some buses of some kind or something. Um, what a facility. I mean, when this was first brought up to me that uh, you know, Lake Tran might be interested in putting a transfer site and a charging station, I think I had a little vision of something a little smaller. Um, this is amazing. I, and the, the crowd that's here this morning, I think, also uh, speaks to the value of an organization like Lake Tran as folks are wont to say, if it didn't exist, we'd have to create it. Uh, Lake Tran has been phenomenal partners with, with the college. Uh, we've done a lot of things together, and uh, uh, we're really delighted to see something like this finally come to fruition. So welcome to Lakeland. Um, every day here at Lakeland is a holiday, um, so, but it never rains, so you're safe, so don't worry about it. Thank you. Might I suggest on a windy day to have something to hold your script in place if you ever have to do that. But uh, thank you very much, Dr. Beveridge. And at this time, I'd like to invite our CEO, Ben Capel, to share more about the new transit center and the goals for our electric bus program. Well, hey, everybody. It is really great to see you guys here. It is really great for this many of you to come out and celebrate this with us. Um, you know, this is a pretty significant occasion for us, as you can imagine. It's not every day you can celebrate multiple milestones at one event. Um, as you can see here at our new facility that we built the last couple years, um, this is our busiest bus stop. Uh, so this facility represents that in the way it will help serve our customers. Um, it also represents a significant innovation in the transportation world. Um, we built this building from the ground up to house electric vehicle charging. You know, as you can see, there's two pretty big devices in the canopy here that uh, facilitate that bus charging, and we'll, we'll do a demo here a little bit later. Um, but it takes a long time to do this type of thing. You know, I remember our first meeting, and Morris just mentioned when I met with him and said, you know, what if? And what if is always sort of a frightening uh, phrase when you're bringing up something that might be a little uh, strange at the time. But now that you look at it, you think, well, this makes sense. Um, and you really, you know, you can't accomplish this without a great group of board members that believe in a vision, uh, staff that can pull that mission together, and then drivers that can execute it, you know, the way it needs to be done. So I have to thank, you know, everybody at, at Lake Tran, the board, and my team for making this happen, um, along with a lot of great partners. Um, Brian mentioned that, you know, partnerships are what make the world go round, and that's what made this facility work. We have a lot of funding partners here today that will have a chance to kind of say hello. Um, but most importantly, you know, we got the technology to be able to do this. Um, 
Julia is reminding me that I should have my script open to not forget something. <laughs> um, so, some kind of interesting facts about electric vehicles that are really important. You know, one, they don't produce any emissions when they drive around, um, and that's a big deal. Two, they're very quiet, which for a transit rider is really important. But everything we do at Lake Tran, while the customer is first and technology is important, the taxpayers are also the most important. So while this technology is amazing and it saves us in noise and, and uh, air pollution, it also saves us money, which, you know, at the end of the day, is one of the most important things about electric buses. These electric buses, when they're in service, will save us about $400,000 or $400, annually in fuel and maintenance. So over the life of, the, of those buses, they're going to save Lake Tran about $1.2 million, which is not a small chunk of change to save over the life of a bus. Um, some of the other really amazing things are um, this bus is equipped with some of the most modern safety and accessibility features you can get in a bus. There's a device on this that allows a person in a wheelchair to enter the bus and push a button and get secured without the driver having to help them, which is a pretty big deal to folks that are using a mobility device. Um, we also have 12 cameras, so we always know what you're doing. So if you see a bus, you're on camera, watch out. Um, it also has something that a lot of people might not appreciate. It has an electronic system that knows how high the bus is and when it needs to lower itself to facilitate someone getting on. There's a whole bunch of computers that tell it what the right height is for the environment, which is a pretty important thing out on the road. Um, like I mentioned, we have these chargers. These are 450 kilowatt chargers, so it's a significant amount of energy with 800 amps. So for reference, um, your house is about 200 amps. So each one of these is four houses. Um, the other thing that's really important, like I mentioned, our partners, this building was designed by CT Consultants in Menor and Tech Consulting in Willoughby. And it was built by Angle Key Construction, which is in Bainbridge. I, I forget exactly what location they're in, but they're in Ohio. <laughs> um, and also, you know, all the electrical work here was done by VL Chapman in uh, Grand River. Um, I'd also like to thank some special people that helped make this project move forward, which is Dr. Beveridge. Um, you know, he had to also believe in our vision for this facility. It wasn't just Lake Tran, but we had to make sure that uh, Lakeland was on board as well. And of course, they, they, op they uh, welcomed us with open arms. Um, but I'd also like to like, mention some folks at Lakeland that really helped us, which is Mike Mayer, Bert Deal, and uh, Steve Gagliardi. Um, they made a big difference in making this project move forward. Um, so. Next, that was our milestone at Lake Tran about having electric vehicles and a state-of-the-art facility to operate them from. I'd like to talk about the original milestone that, that allowed us to be here today, which is uh, Frank Polifka. And we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for his vision and his belief in transportation in Lake County. Um, there's probably not another person that has shaped transportation in Lake County as much as Frank Polifka. It's not every day you can say, I started a transit system. Um, he was hired in 1979. He was Lake Tran's first employee. He likes to brag he also bought our first pencil. Might have been a pen though, we're not sure. Um, but he was a creative guy and he's what led us to be here today. So Frank, you can come on up as I, as I talk about you a little bit. Um, You know, in the early days, at the height of suburban sprawl, it was not easy to communicate to people that transportation and public transit was a critical need in the community. And Frank spent a lot of time doing that, and he pulled it off in 1988 when Lake Tran's first levy was voted on by the people. And the people of Lake County agreed with Frank that Lake Tran is something that this community needs. After he successfully earned that vote in 1998, or 1988, um, he launched Dial-A-Ride, which is a nationally recognized uh, service in, in many ways. In the early 90s, he launched our park and ride service to take people to downtown Cleveland, and he grew our fixed route fleet to service many corners of Lake County. And what's really interesting is Frank has been committed to alternative fuels for a long time. So it's especially fitting that this facility here ushers in a new wave of alternative fuel technology. You know, Frank bought some of the first natural gas buses in Ohio in 1997. And so I couldn't think of a more fitting person to name a facility like this after. Um, he retired from Lake Tran after quite a few years at the helm, and, but he couldn't get out of transit. 
transit is kind of like a drug. And he went to RTA, where he finished a 40-year career in transit in 2019. While he was at RTA with Joe Calabrese, the former CEO, who I know is here somewhere, um, he built the nation's first really amazing BRT transit system in Cleveland. He oversaw a lot of fle fleet replacement there, and he really continues to give back to Lake County during that time as a chairman or a, uh, commissioner on the Metro Parks. And so Frank, you know, you left big shoes to fill, and I don't wear very big shoes. So we are honored today to name this building after you. And Julia gave me a little fact that is especially interesting, that we've now served 23 million people in our history. So that is a significant number of Lake County folks that have ridden the bus. But ultimately, this day is about Frank. And, you know, we all owe a debt of gratitude to Frank for what, for his vision in Lake County. And I know when I met him for lunch to tell him that this was, was going to happen, he looked at me and I think it was the first time in his life he was speechless. <laughs> so, you know, we're here today to really celebrate Frank and, and please join me in a round of applause, applause to really thank Frank for his vision and where we are today. It's your turn to speak now. So. <laughs> it's kind of hard to follow that. Uh, but ben, thank you so much. Thank you to the Board of Trustees, Chuck Zibble, Brian Falkowski, the entire board. This is really, really one hell of an honor. And, you know, uh, yeah, I'm a lucky guy because in all these years, I've had some great. I mean, absolutely great people to work with. Because, you know, as I look out at this crowd today, an amazing crowd, it really makes this a little more difficult for me to articulate. But I, I see people here from my old neighborhood in Wycliffe. I see friends that I've had since kindergarten, Tommy Martin standing over there, who went to kindergarten together. I look, uh, there's other people I went to Wycliffe High School with. That's really, really heartwarming, and I'm thinking, you know, that the folks that I went to high school with are going, what the hell happened to him? <laughs> he wasn't that bright. <laughs> and they're right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, all my friends that are here, and colleagues and associates, I mean, it's, it's really, really heartwarming. Uh, and, and thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. To, uh, to be here with, with us as we as we honor this building, this technology, and uh, you know, and this building that's named after me. Although, let me tell you, and those of you that know me, that know me really, really well, know that I could screw up a sandbox. <laughs> so listen, all this, you know, this is a, a great culmination of a career. But that career was really put together on, you know, the hard work of, of thousands of people who offered advice over all this time period. So I'm really buoyed by all of their effort in guiding me. It was kind of like making a sword, you know, they put you in the heart, they hammer you out, they test you, you know, and there have been fiery moments. But, you know, I, I, it's really been a, I love public service, Ben said a, I've had a career right now spending, probably spanning 45 years of public service, and it's all about giving people high service, providing terrific customer service, creating value, and making sure that their tax dollars are spent the way they would spend them. It's really, really critical for success in public service to do that. And, and in that 45 years, I've served with three, three outstanding value-driven organizations. Certainly Latran, the GCRTA, and right now with Lake Metro Parks. And I enjoyed every moment of, of every you know, thing that I did at work. And I had, uh, but like I said, it stands on 
on the work of so many people that have supported me. And the first is, is my family, my wife Jane and our children, Jimmy, Chip, and Tess. You know, they, they, you, get, you, you make me proud every day and I love you dearly. Thank you so much. Look at it, there are some people from my old neighborhood in Wycliffe here today, Denise and Louis Tarasco. I don't know how they found out, but they did and they came, you know, and they know as much as I do how my mom and dad would be bursting with pride today if they were here to see what, what we've accomplished together and celebrating with my name on it. And you know, because I grew up with a Wycliffe, you know I tested their patience when I was growing up. <laughs> uh, but today we're here. We're going to recognize the past. Ben's already shared this vision of the future, which is an amazing technology. Um, but Lake County is, for us to be integrating these electric buses into the fleet and operation is a glimpse of the future. We know that you know, maybe in the not too distant future, we're going to see a change. A big change is coming. We're not going to, you know, unfortunately, I'm kind of a car guy. I know it's tough to be a car guy and in transit at the same time. But that was a deep, dark secret that I've had over the years. Uh, but you know, we're going to, we're probably going to see the phasing out of internal combustion engines as our propulsion. Uh, probably not in my lifetime because you know I'm getting up there. But certainly in many of your lifetimes, that's probably, that's going to happen. And Lake Tran has always been an adopter of new technology and innovation in its mission to provide clean, safe, dependable transit to Lake County residents. About a year and a half ago, you know, Ben shared, he invited me to lunch. And I was talking with Jane, I said, what do they want me to go to lunch for? You know, I'm already fat enough. But we went to we went to lunch and he handed me the plans for these facility for this facility. I'm thinking, oh, you know, maybe he's trying to draw on all those years of experience that I had at the RTA and in contracting and you know, yeah, I wanted me to take a look at him. I'm thinking, well, he's off on the wrong track already. But you know, at any rate, you know, I flipped to the second page and I was absolutely stunned and speechless because on the second page. You know, was the naming of the facility after me. So, you know, I couldn't express my my gratitude at that point, and how deeply touched uh, that I was for being honored. Because, uh, and it's really still kind of a struggle. Because in my in my career, one of the things I really always tried to do was make it about we and not me. I even talked to, you know, many times the folks at Lake Tran know how much time I spent in the operator's room talking to the, to the drivers. And one of the things I always tried to impress upon them was that, look, I know in your mind I'm at the top of the org chart. I says, but you know, in real life, what we do, that's not the reality. The reality is, is that you are at the top of the York chart because you, enter, you know, you you serve our customers on a daily basis. You're the face of Lake Tran. You're we rely on you to deliver this great service and to be on time and and, and all the other things that come with you know creating value to those riders. That's really the important aspect I thought tried to impress upon them, which I think helped make Lake Tran a really high performance organization over the years. But I had great staff. You know, I could do it a lot. I have to have great staff. And I'd like, you know, Barb Schroffel's here today. Barb was my first hire, I believe. And, she, you know, you always got to have Mom Lake Tran aboard. And she was. And she did a stellar job. <laughs> Gary, Gary, Gary May and Bill Hamilton, our CFO. Maureen Snowden, Andy Altenwick, and our legal counsel, you know, you can't do much without legal counsel. But I had a great one because 
He never told me no. He told me how. Yeah. How to get it done if it was a little sketchy. And so we got it done, and Don Ezone's here today. And Don, you know, I've always appreciated our long relationship and the great work that you did for Lake Tran. Sorry, I also debated for a long time whether I was going to write these remarks or do this extemporaneously. And I thought, and I was right, that I better rely on something written because I was going to be so overwhelmed by trying to do this that uh, I would forget everything that I wanted to say because of the, because of the honor and, and the, humil the humility that I feel right now. It's really, really overwhelming. Uh, but I, I got to tell you, we had a we had a great team at uh, Lake Tram. The dispatchers, the mechanics, the phone operators, and the drivers. Every day, they tried to improve their performance from the day before. And that performance was, was recognized by the American Public Transportation Association when they awarded us the best public transit service in the country. Think about it. Little, little Lake Tram. And, and you know, it wasn't a one-off. And what made me really proud was a couple of years after I had retired, they won it again. There was a solid foundation there, and you know, and that great work continued. And you're still seeing that great work being carried on by Ben and his terrific team today. But our drivers were absolutely extraordinary. I mean, these are ordinary people, but doing extraordinary things. They take, you know, these because they, especially one on one with the customers on the dial ride, and they would take folks to all their important appointments, doctors' offices, cancer treatments, <laughs> the grocery store. These folks really relied on us, and our drivers would come back with, you know, well, and dialysis. I mean, all these extremely important things. If folks would, our drivers would come back and share stories, which is one of the reasons why I went to the driver's room. Because you get pumped up after hearing these great stories of this humanity that, you know, people would love, you know, to do this public service for these people. And they enjoyed the service. For many of them, it was really, you know, they're only 10 or 15 minutes of, of public, of, you know, contact with a human being for maybe the whole week. It's really important to those to those folks, to our riders, to have that driver to be that support person for them. And you know, there's also articles where we'd find people, you know, I've fallen and I can't get up, and we'd go to their house and we'd rescue them. Those are all great stories too, but it, it's that moment, it's that human moment where those lives touch and their and their lives are improved because of the service that we provide. And that was why I got out of bed every day, because those are great things to do in life, and that's work that's really worthwhile doing. We knew that uh, Dial Ride was vital to our county residents. And Dial Ride, actually, I gotta tell you, grew out of a little project that was sponsored by the Western Reserve Junior Service League. You know, they started, it's hard to imagine this, but at one time, and this wasn't that long ago, if you if you needed treatment because you had a bad heart, or more importantly, if you had cancer and you needed treatment, you had to go to Cleveland. And, you know, the, the women, at the Western Reserve Junior Service League recognized this need. And they put together some money and they launched this little bus that cares. It was a little van and they contracted with the American Heart Association that was located in Painesville and the Cancer Society office in Painesville. And they were taking people back and forth to Cleveland for that service. And that's that's really how you know our dial ride kind of grew up and evolved over the years. But if it wasn't for their work and their recognition of those unmet needs in our county, 
we may not be as developed and as caring and as sensitive to our passengers as we are today. So uh, thanks to their, their aware, awareness and resilience to recognize those unmet needs in Lake County and, and push that envelope to move it forward. I also had some outstanding boards of trustees that I worked for. But it's an interesting little story, and I got maybe three stories to share with you before, and I hope it's not too boring, and I hope I get done before it rains. But you know, I, I interviewed for this job in 1979. It was the most peculiar interview for a public position ever. Why? It was in, for those of you that are in government, understand this? It was in public session public session. No, the other candidates weren't in the same room, but everybody else was. We interviewed and I got later that later that night, some of you are going to recognize this, I got a call from none other than Dave Jones, who was the beat reporter for Lake County, okay, who was in the room and heard all the candidates be interviewed. And he told me that I had done a really, really great job during the interview, and he speculated that uh, I'd be hired, and he was correct. I think he had inside information, but uh, it was correct. And, and I tell you, I have to tell you, I know, uh, I know Ray Smith is here. Ray Smith was a board member and great guy, and he, Ray, you spent 30 some years on the board with me, or at least 25 years on that board. Uh, Clara Morris, Frank Angeloro, Bob Clark, Dennis Morgan, Don Fitzgerald, Phil Haskell, Harry Waterman, Dick Cleary, Jim Sattel, just some of them. I mean, I probably served with over 50 board members, but you know, and many of their pictures are really on display inside. Take a look at them. Uh, but they really were a, a, a great uh, folks to work with. But you know, also in the early days, I had to work with the Board of County Commissioners. And they were really, really good to us because, you know, as we, you learned earlier, we didn't pass our first dedicated funding until 1988. So we relied on plead and bleed money from the County Commissioners is what I like to call it. We have to go in there every year and ask for an allocation of these really scarce resources. You can appreciate it. So I worked with, you know, and they were very supportive. So I worked with uh, Jack Platts and Mike Coffey, Ev Mastrangelo, Bob Gardner, Dale Fellows, Millie Tusher, Ray Sines, and Dan Troy. Worked with Dan a lot because, you know, he's been around a lot. <laughs> he's done great work for us. Uh, but we also had great legislative uh, support as well. That Congressman Eckert and Steve Latourette, who, who was great, they were both great supporters of our cause in Congress, and would come back and, and uh, do events with us. They were absolutely great folks. Uh, I missed I missed Steve today, but uh, I know Dennis is around. And I, from our state representative delegation, I mean, we had some of the finest in that delegation at the time. But uh, my, my good friend, Dennis Watnowski, Ed Hughes, Dan Troy, I told you I'd mention him again, Bob Boggs, Bob Hagen, Ray Sines, and Bob Gardner. With tremendous support from ODOT, especially from Lake County native Carla Seferati. Thank you, Carla. I don't never speak ill about anybody, but you know, we. We always work closely with NOACA as well. And some of you know clearly that I was, I never really got along with uh, with Fred Pizzadass uh, because he he didn't want us to be a designated recipient because we'd, he always would take a little money off the top. It was his, it was his big, you know, to pay for his operations and whatever he was doing. And, you know, to me, that money was really important because we were pinching pennies. Uh, so 
We, uh, I think, uh, I think, I think Dick Celeste was the governor then. And we went down to ODOT, we made our plea to uh, Carla and, and Eileen Cope that we should be a designated recipient. And GCRTA sent uh, now a good friend of mine, Terry Samagala, down. I, that was unbeknownst that he was going to show up. When he was in the room, I thought, oh, geez, I'm in deep trouble. With me. But he actually was a friend, and he said, yes, they should be their own designated recipient. And it, it all worked out great. We ended up being our designated recipient, and Nowaka didn't get the fig anymore. But once Fred was gone, and Howard Mayer, and now Grace Bellucci is there, it's a totally different organization. They do great work, and we're you know, proud to be, be affiliated with them. But, you know, the reason why we succeeded is because we had all of those tremendous, great people working to support us and assist us when we needed it. And I'd be, I'd be remiss if I did not, you know, recognize me. You know, this, is, this world's complicated. But, you know, we also relied on contractors and vendors and suppliers to give us the good stuff. And some of those folks are here today. Tommy Heyman, Donnie Bullock, Randy Veenhoven. You know, Chapman Electric uh, was there when we built our first building, and JTO was the uh, was the prime contractor, Jerry Osborne. That building came in on time and under budget. Still proud of, of that. At the first attempt of us building a building, it was pretty good. I got to tell you a great story, though, because back in 1988, when we were putting our campaign together to try and get a quarter percent sales tax, pass in Lake County. You know, I think it was the fifth time, fifth time that Lake Tran was going to be on the ballot. We changed everything, though. We only went for a quarter, not a half. We featured Dial-A-Ride, where it says that that's really going to be our focus. Yes, we're going to have some traditional service, but Dial-A-Ride, really important. And we had to do it because some of you will recall the county who was funding us it wasn't that they didn't want to give us the money anymore. It's just that the, there used to be this program called general revenue sharing that came from the federal government. And that's what the county was passing through to us to operate Lake Tranville. Well, they cut general revenue sharing. The county didn't have any money to give to us. We had to f figure out how to go get a dedicated source of funding. We put, to put together a campaign organization, we decided to ask Lake County voters for support of a quarter, quarter percent sales tax. We recruited former Congressman Bill Stanton, John Redmond's mother, Kay Redmond, Jim Zampini and Patty Mackey as our co-chairs. You know, when you go through these things, you do the rubber chicken circuit, you go to all the editorial boards. Well, so I took, took Bob Clark and we went to the editorial board of the News Herald. The editorial board. Some of you are going to appreciate these names. Doug Thomas was the publisher then. Jim Collins, of course, was the editor. And Ted Dyan. That was that was the editorial board. We went there. We made and we made our pitch. And at the end of it, we explained how different this proposal was from the past, and how it really reflected the existing needs in Lake County and how it was going to work and how it was so much better than anything else that was done because it was a homegrown plan that really grew out of the needs that we, we, had, we were experiencing and the hole that was there. But what happened, when normally you hope to walk out, you got your fingers crossed that if they do, if they stay silent, you're happy because it's better than them saying no. But that's not what they did. They overwhelmingly endorsed, you know, our effort. And they did something that was totally, totally unprecedented. They ran their own ads for the passing the tax. The News Herald staff came up with a whole, you know, flight of, of ads that they put together to say, vote for this issue. And yes, it did pass. And, and re really, you know, it was amazing. Well, the voters 
approved it, and we, the Lake Tran folks, we had six years, because that's what we asked for, we had it sunsetted, we had six years to prove that it was a good idea that the, the investment that the taxpayers make, and that meant failure at any level was not an option. We had to live up to the billing that the voters had given to us and the promises that we made to them and the contract that they had signed with us. We identified every best practice in, in the United States for public transit. We sent benchmarks and we achieved it. Six years later, overwhelmingly, Lake County voters renewed the sales tax. But the support from the news held really put us over to the top. And I would be remiss if I did not, you know, remind you of that little bit of history because it was so critical to our success. I told you earlier, this isn't about the things that I've achieved. This is all about the things that people have helped me build, helped, assisted, all these years, you know, to come up with where we are today. But we're really fortunate. Uh, and then, after my retirement, Joe Calabrese hired me at the RTA. I spent 16 years there, great years. I really wondered if I was going to be able to adapt to being, a, you know, say in a support role to a great dynamic CEO. It was easy. Joe made it so easy for me. And I was surrounded by ter tremendously talented and dedicated people down there. Some of them are here today. And, Belinda and Sharon are on my staff. Ted Pickett was probably the best spec writer for buses in the entire world. But Joe was committed to making the GCRTA, you know, recognized in the United States as one of being the best transit systems. And not only that, so he actually four years later, we were recognized as the best transit system in, in, the, in the United States. And then a year after that, he was recognized, he doesn't like this, but he was recognized as the best transit CEO in the United States. And Joe, thank you very much for that privilege. And, and right now, it's really a change, right? As I go from transit to parks, oh, how refreshing is that? <laughs> These parks are easy. And you know, and those, the employees of the park system, always they're smiling why they work in a park <laughs> it's really cool they are such wonderful people they are so creative i get so charged out of that and they're so i serve as a park board commissioner with with john redmond and gretchen scope DeSano. judge mark Bar bartolotta the probate judge appoints us and it's just a great organization doing wonderful things for Lake County, and it's customer driven and it creates value. And I'm sure that uh, that the residents of Lake County will continue to support Lake Metro Parks. But before all of that, it was here at Lakeland Community College where the transformation of that kid from Bryn Mawr and Wycliffe really started to happen. This was the beginning of my adult life, right here, Lakeland Community College. And I remember Morris Beveridge because he was roaming the halls of Lakeland when I was. Uh, so I started here right after I left South Vietnam. Gentlemen, thank you for your service. But I really wasn't so sure about my academic abilities. It's what a community college is for, right? As I, you know, and some of my classmates will attest to it, I never made studying a priority in high school. <laughs> I was all about fast cars and other fast things, so, you know, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, but I found out that I actually really, really enjoyed college and this experience. And it was here that those professors that I, you know, that I had ignited something in me that 
Well, I didn't know it was there. And it was a great, great, great experience. So I got to, you know, pay a little homage to folks like Jim Struna, Russ McClurg, Perry Leupold, John Kessler, and Jack Glatz. Thank you for nurturing my early days here. Such a treat. But most importantly, I met my wife, Jane Rako, here about 48 years ago. So yeah, Lakeland did change my life. <laughs> so while this building has my name on it, it really is a symbol of a culmination of a tremendous community effort that I got to be a part of. That so many people that influenced me, tolerated me, and assisted me in so many different ways over the years, that this is a celebration of all of their efforts as well. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you all very much. Congratulations, Frank, and thank you for everything you've done. At this time, I'd like to invoke invite Chuck Dyer up, Transit Administrator for the Ohio Department of Transportation. Well, I guess first off, I would like to appreciate or thank Frank for not saying bad words about ODOT. So thank you, Frank, for keeping it positive. Um, I'm, um, on behalf of the Director of the Ohio Department of Transportation, Jack Marchbanks, I'm pleased to be here today at this opening. My name is Chuck Dyer. I'm the Administrator for the Office of Transit at ODOT. I've been in that role about six years. And so I, I, I enjoyed listening to Frank's stories today about the struggles they had in becoming, um, becoming the transit system that they are today. And the stories are not unlike any other part of the state, or any corner of the state, but, but from, from what I can tell, What's, what's a, I guess what this community has to be thankful for, Frank and his role, is that Frank was really successful in what he was able to accomplish. And, and when I think about good managers and what makes a good manager is that an organization can continue to be successful without them in place. And so getting, getting that award four years or three years after Frank was able to step out meant that he, he hired good staff, he trained good staff and he and he trusted his employees and they continued to do a good job. So I, w I would agree with the uh, decision to name this place after Frank and uh, I'm, I'm really excited to be here today. I mean, what a crowd, right? I, I'm not, I don't think this, I think this is the largest crowd I've seen at a transit opening across the state. So this is this is good. We should be happy. We should be positive. And remember this day as well. So ODOT was able to um, support this. $1.5 million through this OTP2 Ohio Transit Partnership Program. Um, we thank the Ohio General Assembly and the governor for providing that through the biennium budget in the 2021. And through the program, the OTP2, we had two different strategies, the preservation, and then we also had the uh, uh, innovation. So this project was funded under the innovation side. We're able to make investments to not only for public transit, but where it's meeting other goals such as environmental and service expansion. So we're, we're hopeful that we continue to make these investments across the state, and we're really excited to see it come to fruition here up at Lake, in Lake County. So we commend Lakeland's, or Lake Trans partnership with, in coordination with Lakeland Community College, and congratulations on the completion of the Frank J. Polifka Transit Center. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I would like to point out that 90% of this building was funded with federal and state dollars. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite Grace Gallucci, the Executive Director and CEO of NOACA, to come up. Good morning. I am thrilled. It is still a good morning. It's even better morning. The sun's coming out. Um, on behalf of the NOACA board, Congratulations to Lake Tran, to the Lakeland Community College, and of course to Frank Polifka. I would like to acknowledge some board members that are here today. We have Commissioner John Hammercheck, who is an executive committee of the NOACA board, Ben Capel, who of course is our CEO here at Lake Tran, uh, John Plecknick, our newest board member from uh, the Lake County Commissioners, and former members 
Dan Troy, and Jerry Serino. So on behalf of all of them, congratulations. You know, this project is very representative of the work that we do at NOACA. For those of you that don't know us well, um, the story that Frank just told you was probably not the best way to get to know us, but <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless, here we are. Um, so NOACA is the Metropolitan Planning Organization for Greater Cleveland. Uh, we have responsibility for transportation and environmental planning. Our vision statement says that NOACA will strengthen regional cohesion, build a sustainable multimodal transportation system, preserve existing infrastructure to support economic development and enhance the quality of life for those people in Northeast Ohio. This project not only checks every one of those boxes, it does it in a big, bold way. This is a magnificent, magnificent structure. I, as I was pulling in, thought, is that really it? It is, this is terrific, this is great. And what better way to spend transportation dollars than on building a transit center at a college? That was brilliant. Thinking about connecting people to places they need to go, such as jobs, schools, housing, um, and other activities, including medical. This is a great facility, and uh, we're very proud to be part of it. This facility was paid for by many sources. One of the sources was a federal uh, surface transportation program that we initiated at NOACA a few years ago called the TLCI Implementation Program. This is one of the first projects that we funded through that. We're very proud of the success. And uh, Ben, there'll be a lot of uh, communities that are gonna have to live up to this, you know. So um, I also wanna acknowledge Frank. Um, he said something about sketchy, um, and then he did talk about NOACA. Uh, but, but, <laughs> but I do wanna, you know, I, 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 I was hesitant to give a, uh, another Frank story because I think Frank gave them all, but I do have one that sort of builds on one of his. And that is uh, when we worked together at the RTA. So I worked uh, for Joe Calabres and with Frank at the RTA for a few years. And during that time, I was the budget director and Joe uh, would come to us, meaning myself, chief legal counsel and Frank as a team and say, here's what I'd like to do, can we do this? I would immediately say no. Uh, Cheryl King Benford legal counsel would immediately say no and Frank would say well wait a minute let's think about this and sure enough through his uh, leadership and, and discussions we would think of a way to get it done so when he says sketchy not so sketchy uh, legally sketchy so um, I end this by saying this is a terrific project and also the buses are paid for through um, congestion mitigation air quality dollars from NOACA as well as other sources and that too is a terrific expenditure of funds for getting us to a point where we are emission free and NOACA does not build anything ourselves we plan and we fund what we build best as exhibited here is partnerships so thanks to Lake Tran and to Lakeland Community College to the Board of County Commissioners for that terrific partnership. Thank you. Thank you very much, Grace. And at this time, would Carolyn Watkins, the administrator for the Diesel Emissions Reduction Grants at the EPA, please come up? Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today to help Lake Trans celebrate innovation and leadership. And we people from Columbus come out just to make sure that our public dollars are being spent properly and we're very, very pleased with the results of one of our grants being put to such good use. Ohio EPA awarded Lake Tran just over one and a half million dollars to replace six diesel school buses, a portion of the cost to replace those with new electric buses. And we estimate that this project, these six buses, will save one and a half tons 
of pollution every year that those six buses continue in operation. And that's specifically pollutants like soot particles, carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons, and nitrogen oxides that contribute to smog and impact public health. So we're very pleased about that. Funding comes from a civil penalty, settlement of a civil lawsuit against Volkswagen, Audi, and their related companies for selling more than 16,000 devices, vehicles in Ohio that had illegal defeat devices that turned off the emission controls. It was part of a $14 billion settlement of the suit nationwide. And we're happy Ohio received $75 million and we're delighted that we've been able to see these funds put to good use around the state. So far we've used those funds to replace 328 old diesel school buses, 65 transit buses, 287 heavy trucks, 17 pieces of airport ground support equipment, and one locomotive. We also replaced eight ancient tugboats operating Lake Erie Harbors uh, that had engines going back to the 1930s and hulls going back to the 1890s. And we replaced those with four new diesel electric hybrid tugs. So that's a project we're very proud of. And earlier this year, we announced three and a half million for installing uh, EV charging stations for public cars and vehicles uh, for transportation. And that included um, sites at 179 locations in 22 counties. And that includes charging stations at eight sites in Lake County, including charging stations at Lake Trans headquarters. We're very proud of that. Later this year, we're going to be putting more than $7 million in grants out to install DC fast charging stations along Ohio's major highways to try to help with the transition to electric vehicles. We think these projects have been a very good way to use these dollars, and we're delighted to have had the funds available to help Lake Tran update your fleet of buses, install EV charging stations, and in the process, help improve air quality. Thank you very much. want to show you how really amazing this technology is. What you didn't know is that bus has been running for the last half hour. So how, can, how often can you say you stood around a bus that wasn't, you know, vibrating your teeth out with noise? So if our chairman of our union can uh, do it, go ahead and push the charge button. So it's a little anticlimactic, but it's still pretty cool. So every time a bus pulls up to this site that's electric, driver will pull up and they'll push a button and the device in the canopy of the building will come down and charge the bus. Which, like I said, it's a little anticlimactic, but at the same time, it takes an amazing amount of things to make that happen. And so that bus is now charging, which is sort of crazy, right? At least to me it is, you know, I've been in buses for a long time. So with that, I'd like to turn the program back to Brian to uh, have some of our uh, dignitaries come up. Thank you very much, Ben. And when Ben says the uh, bus has been running for the half hour of the program, I think he means about an hour and five minutes at this point. But that's okay. At this time, I would, uh, if you have a proclamation to present, I would ask you to please come up to the podium, identify yourself. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm State Senator Jerry Serino. Uh, before I uh, make my presentation, uh, for full disclosure, I have to tell you that Morris Beverage stole my tie this morning. <laughs> and rumor has it he gave it to Frank. And we don't know what Frank did with it. Where's Frank? Okay. Somewhere around here. He's not wearing one either. So at some point, Frank, I would like my tie back. Okay. Uh, on behalf of, uh, we have two accommodations from the State Senate for you this morning and uh, we would just like to congratulate uh, not only uh, the dedication of the building and uh, as a testimony to Frank's dedication and years of service to our community here uh, but also uh, for the great partnership between Lakeland Community College, uh, Lake Tran uh, and other agencies in the state as well as you just heard uh, because this addresses uh, requirements to serve our community from a transportation standpoint an education standpoint, uh, as well as um, uh, 
good energy policy and keeping our environment clean and uh, operating efficiently here. So on behalf of the Ohio Senate, we'd like to present this commendation to the entire staff. Thank you. Good morning, or good afternoon, I guess, already. I'm a State Senator Kenny Yuko, the Senate Minority Leader. Very, very happy and very proud to be part of this event this morning. We have also two senatorial cit citations, one for Frank and one for Latran. And I, I really should have, I'm remiss because I didn't have one for all of you, because for all of you being here, you are the reason why we do things like this. You are the reasons why we can be successful. You are the reasons why we make Move Ohio forward. Thank you all and God bless. Thank you. I'm State Representative Daniel Troy, and despite what you've heard today, I'm actually considered a freshman in the Ohio House this year, so uh, uh, that, that's kind of a new role. But, uh, you know, I'm glad to be here today because it's a great day for Lake County. I think it celebrates three treasures uh, that we have here in Lake County. I've lived here just about my entire life, and I think, uh, first of all, you know, Lakeland Community College, uh, uh, who I've worked with over the years uh, on, on uh, funding, on, on construction buildings and things like that, uh, you know, such a treasure to prepare uh, our young people, the future workforce that's going to keep our economy going in Lake County. And, and Lake Tran, uh, what, what a treasure that has been. Uh, certainly, I salute their commitment to public transportation and certainly their commitment to a a, a cleaner environment. Uh, I think, you know, if you know the last budget we passed, uh, the governor was a little bit uh, less than generous in what he recommended for public transit, but I'm happy that the House and the Senate uh, substantially added uh, to the funding for public transit in the state of Ohio. But we need to do a lot better job than we're doing right now, and we also need to do a lot better job on dealing with climate change and supporting efforts like this by Lakeland Community College. So. Uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, they mentioned about, uh, Grace was here mentioning uh, uh, Ben uh, being on the Lake Tran. When I was county commissioner, we made sure, because Lake Tran is so important, we made sure that they got a permanent seat on the five-member governing board, the five members that represent Lake County on the governing board. Uh, and and uh, NOAC has been so helpful in getting the funding for these particular uh, type of uh, innovative uh, methods of, of transportation. Uh, you know, I've worked, and then, you know, finally, the real treasure, and the third treasure, is Frank Polivka. You know, celebrating Frank Polivka and what he's done for this particular county. I go way back work with Frank when you were working out of that uh, place in Grand River. I don't know what was, I don't know, Billy Bob's or Buffalo Bill's bar or something like that it became. And then uh, Frank said, you know, we got to have a new facility and all that. So, you know, I was able to work with some people in Columbus and they get money for the facility that they have out there in Lakeshore Boulevard on the Grand River, uh, Painesville Township border and all that. I know. Remember, Gordy Shearer was the lobbyist for public transit, and he said, for crying, out, for, for crying out loud, Troy, there's only $3 million in that transit fund for the state of Ohio, and you grabbed almost $2 million of it and all that. I said, well, we deserved it. So uh, we were able to do that. So again, I, I was happy as commissioner to work with Frank and uh, the, the transit system on, on not only that facility, but kind of tying them into Medicaid funding through our Jobs and Family Service Department for transportation, things like that. So, uh, with, you know, again, these are three great treasures, great day for Lake County. On behalf of the Ohio House of Representatives, uh, you know, I'd also like to make a quick mention, too. They mentioned that uh, the funding for this came from the state of Ohio in the 2021 budget. That actually would have been the budget passed in 2019, so I think we got to give credit to Kenny Yuko and then State Representative John Rogers, who really advanced that at that time. So on behalf of the Ohio House of Representatives, we are pleased to recognize the dedication of the Lake Trent Frank J. Polivka Transit Center, uh, and the recognition of this is fitting, for this dedication provides a unique opportunity to honor the legacy of an outstanding alumnus of Lakeland Community College, Frank J. Polivka, who enjoyed a 42-year career in the field of public transit and has done so much for Lake County. Congratulations, Frank. Congratulations, Lakeland Community College. Congratulations, Lake County. My name is Katie Berger, and I'm here on behalf of Congressman David Joyce's office, and it's an honor to be here today to celebrate this dedication ceremony. And so on behalf of the Congressman, I also have two proclamations, one for Frank and one for Lake Tran, just to 
congratulate you on this collaboration and we're so excited to have you here. So congratulations and thank you for all that you do. Hello, hello, and welcome to Lake County. My name is John Plechnik, and I'm honored to serve as the 79th Commissioner of Lake County, but Frank Polivka was the first, the first employee of Lake Tran, and for over 20 years, our general manager. So before we can say anything else, another round of applause for Frank Polivka. On behalf of the Lake County Board of Commissioners, our President John Hammercheck is here with us today, as well as Commissioner Ron Young. We want to present two proclamations, two recognitions. First, to Frank, and second, to all of Lake Tran and Lakeland Community College for this incredible community partnership. Well, Frank was the first, he wasn't the last, which is why his legacy continues to this day. And we're excited that over 65,000 people are going to benefit from this transit center every single year, adding to that 23 million you've already served, Frank. So I just want to present these two proclamations once again to all of Lake Tran and to Frank Blifka. Thank you for your leadership. The Lake County Board of Commissioners commends you. Good afternoon, my name is Ray Palata with the Office of U.S. Senator Rob Portman. Um, I'm happy to be here, and on behalf of the Senator, we want to congratulate Lake Tran on the opening of the Transit Center here, and, and thank uh, Frank for his commitment and dedication to Lake County and, and Northeast Ohio. Um, we also have two congratulatory letters, one for Lake Tran and one for Mr. Polivka, so thank you. Thank you, everyone. And at this time, I would like to invite my fellow board members, all the elected officials, Dr. Morris Beveridge Jr. up for the ceremonial ribbon cutting. And <laughs> Mrs. Polifka and Frank Polifka as well. It's <laughs> like a million. One, two, three. There you go. 